Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to lecture number 4 of the course Object Oriented Programming. In the previous lecture, we have seen what is a constructor. I have shown you the example program and placing class in a separate file and the main function in a separate file and then creating the object of that class in the main function. A destructor and we have seen the example program that when the destructor is called so the constructor is called whenever the object of that class is created the constructor is called implicitly and the destructor when the object of that class is destroyed the destructor is called implicitly means that automatically they are called the user do not need to call them explicitly like the user need to call the other member function of the class using that object. So, the functions ko se call ki jata hai, that is implicit call means that user unko khud se call kar hai, but implicit means they are automatically called. So, constructor, jab bhi object create hoga, the constructor will be called and jab bhi object destroy hoga, then the destructor will be called. Now, object creation ka to pata hai, ab destroy object ka matlab ye hai, for example, uh, uh, you create a function, you write a function and then you call that function from the main function and within that function, this is, this is just the ordinary function, not the member function of the class. Let's say the name of the function is xyz, the ordinary function and uh, you have a class, let's say time and from the main function you call the xyz function and within xyz function you create an object of time class, right? So when you create an object, the constructor will be called. So when the function xyz finished its execution and the control will be transferred back to the place in the main where you call the time function, the object that is created within the xyz function will be destroyed then, right? And at that stage, the destructor with that object is called. And then we have seen constructor with argument and I have shown you the example program and today we will see the what is the overloaded function, how we can write an overloaded function. We will see how we can write an overloaded constructor for a class. We have already seen this this the same thing in the previous lecture but today we will explain it, uh, I will explain it a, a little bit more detail of that overloaded constructor and then we will see the constant objects constant member function of a class and constant data member of a class and constant object as function argument that how you can pass the constant object to a function right so you can have a constant object you can have a constant member function within the class, you can have a constant data member as a private data member of a class and then you can have a constant object as a function argument. We will see uh, each of these in detail with examples. Then we will see what is a friend function and the very important concept this pointer. So object as function argument. So this is the class that we have seen in our last lecture. This is a distance class. It has two private data member feet and inches and and this is the distance constructor this is the default constructor constructor with no argument and this is the constructor with two arguments and the add distance function that we uh, define uh, we write the prototype of add distance function within the class definition but we provide the definition of add dist function outside the class definition and this is our main function so we already know these things. So overloaded constructor. Uh, before, before going into the detail of overloading constructor, because the constructor is a function, right? So uh, let's le uh, le let me show you an example of overloaded function, how we can overload an ordinary function, a simple function, right? And then we will, it, it, it will be easy for us to grab the idea of overloaded constructor. Although there is a constructor in this example that is overloaded, but let me first show you the how we can 
how we can write a, uh, how we can make a simple function overloaded right let's let's go to the def c editor okay so let me write a very simple program So now I'm I'm writing a function add that is used to add two integer and another function with the same name add that can add let's say three integers right so now here in this example add is the overloaded function right now I can simply call this function here Uh, let's say 3 plus 4 plus 5 equals 2. Now call the function add with passing three arguments. Now you can realize that when I pass, when I call the function add with the th three argument, then which function will be called? The function with three arguments. And when I call the function with two arguments, the two arguments add function will be called, will be executed. So let's see, this is 6 plus 7. Now let me write the definition of these function int add int z and within this definition I just have a one statement that is return x plus y plus z right and same is the definition of uh, add function having two arguments so this is an example of overloaded function right we overload the add function so what are the rules the rules are that that whenever you make the function overloaded you have to tell the compiler how it can differentiate between these two function calls because the function name is the same right so add function we have the add function for three integers we have the add function for two integers two arguments right so you have to tell some mechanism to the compiler to make it different uh, to, to make it differentiate between these two function calls and uh, what is that mechanism either the number of parameters passed to that function must be different and the second thing is that if the parameter are the same then the type of the parameter should be different right so here in this example the number of parameters passed to the first function is 2 and the number of parameters passed to the second function are 3 so now when we call the function with three parameters the compiler knows that we are going to call add function with three parameters right so now you can you can compile and run this program before that we have to save it okay now this is the answer right so if the number of parameters are same then we have to make it like the type of the parameters should be different for example float comma float 6.5 sorry 6.5 7.5 this is 6.5 and 7.5 now let's compile it okay uh, there's no function with three parameters so we have to write it like this okay mm, you have to change it as well now the return type of this function should not be add it is float but the first add function we have to pass two parameters and the second 
add function also takes two parameters but the type of the parameters are different so we have to provide some kind of mechanism either the number of parameters should be different and if the number of parameters are same then the type of these parameters should be different right so let's make it float right so okay we can write double double so double is also the float type or we can make it like this that we can declare float type variable x is equal to 5.5 and y is equal to let's say 6.5 and we can pass these parameters here x comma y okay there's no variable z over here now we are passing two float variables to the add function and here are the results 6.5 plus 7.5 that shouldn't be 12 okay so the for the overloaded function you have to either the number of parameters should be different or if the number of parameters are same then the type of these parameter should be different so it's 5.5 actually plus 6.5 that's why it's 12 so here it is 5.5 plus 6.5 and that is 12 obviously right now let's come to the point so here the constructor is overloaded you can see we can we, we have the two functions with the same name distance so the rules are we either the number of parameters should be different or if the number of parameters are same then the type of these parameters should be different so you can see the number of parameters different here we have no parameters but here we are passing two parameters right so now when we call when we when we create an object like this dest1 and dest3 then this means that we are calling the constructor or the compiler will call the constructor implicitly which constructor the constructor with no argument because we are not passing any value over here we are not passing any value with the creation of objects right but with dest2 objects we are passing two values 11 and 6.5 now which constructor will be called not the default constructor here with dest when the dest2 object is created the constructor with two argument will be called that is feet and inches right so dash 2 job object create hoga the constructor distance call hoga but that constructor should be two argument constructor right so it is convenient to be able to give parameters to give variable of type distance a value when they are first created instead of initializing it with zero you can you can assign some kind of values to these to these uh, to the private data member of the distance object and you can do so by writing the overloaded constructor so this is when this function call is executed which defines an object and initialize it to the value 11 for feet and 6.25 for inches so distance dest1 dest2 so when this is executed then no argument constructor is called or invoked and that is called the default constructor so since there are now two constructor with the same name distance we can say the constructor is overloaded like we have the add function that is overloaded and we have at the first place we create the add function with one add function with three parameters the other add function with two parameters so function name is same but the number of parameters are different so this provides the compiler uh, a way to make uh, uh, differentiate which function is called and if the number of parameters are same and then the type of these parameters should be different right now member function define outside the class 
we have also seen this thing that we can define the member function outside the class but we have to write the function prototype inside the definition of the class so such function needs to have the prototype declaration within the class and the function name add dest is preceded by the class name distance and a new symbol the double colon this symbol is called scope resolution operator so you have to tell that add distance function belongs to a distance class why it is so because you can have the classes for example you can have a class distance in which you calculate the uh, store the distance in feet and inches you can have a class distance one for example and where you, you can uh, you can uh, store the distance uh, in kilometers you can have a class distance too where you can store the distance in miles for example and each of these classes has uh, add distance function then if you are going to write the definition for example outside of these class then you have to tell that that particular add distance function belongs to which class either it is it belongs to distance class or distance one class or distance two class so you have to tell this with the class name and the scope resolution operator that is double colon sign right this is the this is the uh, this is the uh, declaration before the definition so this thing tells the compiler that this add function belongs to a distance class right it is the way of specifying what class something is associated with. In this situation, distance, then scope resolution operator add dest means the dist add dest member function of the distance class. Now, a structure and classes. Now we know what is a structure and now we know how we can declare a class and what is a class. So we use structure as a way of, to group data and class as a way to group both data and functions. In fact, you can use structure in almost exactly the same way you can use the class. The only formal difference between class and structure or struct is that in a class the member functions are private by default, but in a structure they are public by default. So by default means that if you write uh, uh, some variable inside the definition of the class and the function, if you don't mention public, then they are assumed to be private. There's no need to write a private keyword, right? Because by default, they are private. If you mention, if you have to make it public, you just you can write the public keyword. You can use the public keyword. So in classes, uh, by default, if you won't mention any access specifier like public or private then the member function or the data member are considered to be private but in structure they are public so if you have to mention that uh, in class definition the um, uh, functions should be public then you have to use the keyword public before these functions now let's see the uh, objects classes and memory so uh, you can see that these are the three different objects of the same class consider these three different objects object 1 object 2 and object 3 so object 1 2 and 3 and they belongs to the same class now when the object is created the attributes of the object or the we can say the data member uh, each object has its own data member that is so in define in class definition we have data one data two so when object one is created data one and data two these variables are for the object one when object two is created data one and data two these are the variable for object two but the functions are shared right so we have the same copy of the function so when object one call the function it called the function and if function 1 or function 2 uses data 1 then they are the data of the object 1 if function object 2 call any of these functions function 1 or function 2 then the data 1 and data 2 are of that object right now let's see the constant constant objects some objects need to be modified and some do not so keyword const is used to specify 
that an object is not modifiable modifiable means that you are you can change the value of the private data member of that object right so if the object is constant then it is not possible to change the value or to change the private value of the private data member of that object and we can use the same keyword that we have used for the simple variable to make it const constant like a keyword uh, keyword is const so any attempt to modify the object the any attempt to modify the constant object should result in compilation compilation error so here we have declare the object of time class so time is the class noon is the name of the object and this is a constant object and these are the parameters with which we have initialized that object if you remember if we can if we declare a constant integer variable we have to assign the value to that constant integer x let's say at the time of the declaration right so here we are going to create or declare an object noon of the class time and at the creation time of the object we have to assign it some values right and now further onward in the program it is not possible to change the value of the noon object so this declares a const const a constant object noon of the class time and initializes it to 12 noon so 12 hours 0 minute and 0 seconds now constant member function a constant member function will not allow to modify the private data member of the object that call that function or the handler object basically this object ke sath aap member function call karte hain that is the handler object and if the function is the constant function then it is not possible to change the parameter of that function of that object private uh, or change the uh, value of the private data member of that object right let me say it again so if the function is constant then it is not possible to change the value of the private data member of the object who call that function actually right so if i if i write uh, let's say d1 dot set dest function if i call this function with the object d1 then in set dest function i'm not it is not possible to to make changes in the value of d1 object now this is an object let's say this is a class a class His name is A class. The private data member is Alpha. Now this is a non-constant member function, non-FUNC, non-constant member function. So if we create a, a an object of A class, right? It is possible to call non-function, right, with that object. and it will change the value of the private data member of that object to 99 but if we call con funcy that is a constant function we have write the keyword over here then it is not possible to change the value of the private data member of that object who call con function con funcy right so if the member function is constant the object that is going to call that function it is not possible within that function to change the value of that object example program let's see uh, let's see the time class the data members are hour minute and seconds and the member functions are set time set hours set minute and set second so these are the setter function and these are the getter functions and for the getter function we make each getter function a constant function because getter function should not be able to modify the private data member of that object although if we want write const over here with the get hours or get minute then it is possible for get hour get minute or get second function to change the value of the private data member of the object that call those functions when we make them constant then it is not possible for these functions to change the value of the object that called these function 
and then the print time function that is that should also be the constant function so every function that return every getter function or every printing function should be a constant function it because we should make that these function constant function why because um, we want that we won't allow them by any chance to change the value of the private data member of the object right and uh, let's see the example program let's go to the example program and okay this is the time class now so this is a simple constructor a constructor with three argument we have set function and set hour function we are going to check if the hour value is been between 0 to 24 that is the purpose of setter function they check the value if the value is valid or not so if the hour is greater than 24 then it doesn't make sense right if the seconds or minute are greater than 20 60 or less than 0 then they are not the actual minute right so in that case it assigns 0 to second hour minute now get our function so if this function returns the hour hours of the object that call get our function and this function is a constant function so it is not possible to write something like hours is equal to 20 if we if we remove this const keyword from here we can do like this in the get our function but if that keyword is here then it is a compiler error now minute is also a constant function second is also a constant function and print time is also a constant function right so we create an object wake up that is not a constant object we create an object noon that is a constant object it should be zero zero then we print the constant object and we print the non-constant object let's say we we call the function set hours for both of these objects let's see what happens with this it it works perfectly fine to change the hours of wake up object because wake up object is non-constant object but noon is a constant object we, it is not possible to execute set hour function with noon object so let's compile it now it gives error over here right so if we comment out this thing and then compile it okay now it show us the time yeah that's it okay the first is the noon time it prints the time for the noon and then the wake up time right now const object as a member as a function argument so we have seen in the previous example we can declare a constant object we can have a member function that is a constant if a member function is constant it is not possible to change the value of the private data member of that object which call that function and if the object is constant we have to assign some value or initialize that object uh, with some values at the time of the creation of that object if we want then it is not possible to to change the value of the constant object further after the creation of that object right now let's see the const object as a function argument now this is the same class as that we have the distance class we have seen the distance class but the only change is this the, the prototype of the add distance function now add distance in the add distance function the return type of the add dist is now a distance object it return a distance object and the parameter we are going to pass that function is a is a reference of a distance object that is constant a constant referenced object of distance type this means that we are passing the reference of the object to this function and if that reference is not constant if the constant keyword is not here then it is possible for the add function to change the value of to change the value of the this referenced object so reference object jo as a parameter a pass kare just up by address pass karte if you pass the variable by address it is possible for that function to change the value of that variable right and if you pass it by value then the change made by that function will be local 
but if you pass by reference so reference is like a creating the same creating a different name for the same memory location right so we will see in detail and we have the const keyword over here this means that the add distance function is a constant function right this means that it is not possible for the add distance to change the value of the object that call the add distance function now this is the definition of the add dest function so const is over here to tell that the add dest is a constant function this constant here is tell that the that the parameter passed to the add distance function is a constant function and that parameter is a referenced object of type distance right so now it is not possible to change the value of d2 neither it is possible to change to change the value of the object that is calling this function right so here uh, you can see this shouldn't be here this line shouldn't be here right because it is not possible to if we write inches is equal to 0 then this inches are the private data member of the object that is calling add dest function right the object like d2 or d dot add dest so it is not possible for add dest function to change the private data member of the function of the object which is calling add dest function right the handler object so this inches shouldn't be here because it is not possible for add dest function to change the value of the private data member of the object that is that is actually calling add dest function right so this line we should omit this line so we in this function we create an object of type uh, uh, of type distance and the uh, name of the object is temp we assign some value inches value in temp and the feet value in temp we have already seen the, the logic in detail in the previous example in the previous lecture and then at the end we return return temp object so temp is return type of the object is distance let's see the main function so this is the main function now let's execute it one by one so in, th in the first statement it creates two objects dest1 and dest3 in the second statement it creates dest2 object let's initialize it with value 11 and 6.25 and then we call the get dest function this is get dest function so it, it asks it prompts the user to input the value of the feet and inches so let's say user enter the value 5 for the feet and 7.0 for the inches the next function is the add dest function now you can see how we are going to call this function we need an object to call the member function and that object is dest1 and we need to pass one object as a parameter to that function that is dest2 now how we are getting that object in add dest function we are getting we are catching this argument object in a get dest in a add dest function as a referenced variable right so reference is you are going to create uh, a, a, same, uh, a different name for the same memory location that is allocated for dest2 right so what add dest will do it will add dest1 and dest2 and then return a distance that will be copied or assigned to dest3 right so this is the add dest function now it has to uh, declare the reference variable so it creates the different name for the same application the different name is d2 for the same application that is allocated for dest2 right like this you can see it is blinking so dest2 ke saath d2 a gaya now with d2 you can access the same application that is allocated for the object dest2 of the main function right so main function which dest dest2 object is because memory allocated with the you create this function creates so this add dest function creates another name for this memory location that name is d2 right so now if i if you write if you write d2 dot inches that is 11 so the next statement is so now this is this constant is over here because 
to to restrict the add dest function to change the value of this reference variable that is dest2 and this constant is over here to restrict the add dest function to change the value of the object that called add dest function and in this example in the main function we can see that dest1 is an object that called add dest function now we create a temporary object so this is a temporary object temp now temp dot inches is equal to inches plus d2 dot inches so this inches are the inches of the object that call this function that is test one so the inches of test one is 7.0 and inches of d2 d2 inches are 6.5 so that is 13.5 that will be assigned to temp inches right and then we have a if condition if temp dot inches is greater than 12 yes it is then we have to subtract 12 from inches temp dot inches se 12 subtract kar denge aur temp dot feet mein 1 add kar denge now we are going to add temp dot feet plus feet feet is actually test 1 object feet of test 1 object this is 5 so 1 plus 5 plus d2 dot feet so d2 dot feet is 11 so 1 plus 5 6 and 11 is 17 so 17 will be assigned to temp and then the temp is returned. You can see the temp is returned. This means that we have a statement now here and it is like dest1, dest3 is equal to temp. So the value of the private data member of the temp object is assigned to the uh, private data member of dest3 because both are of the same type, right? So the values assigned will be assigned this way, the function execution will be finished, and the values 17 and 15 will be assigned. Okay? Then you can print those values using a, so using a show test function, you can print those values. So first the show test function is called with test 1, so 5 feet and 7 inches, and then test 2, 11 feet and 6.5 inches, and then test 3 is 17 feet and 1.5 inches, right? Let's let's go and see the example program. So this is the example program. The function with no argument, the function with two arguments, and get dest function, show dest function, and here is the prototype of the add dest function. You can see this prototype add dest function. That is a constant variable, constant object as a function argument, and this is a constant. This constant is for the constant function, right? Now in the main. We, we already dry run this thing in detail. Let's now compile it and execute it. Enter feet is 12. So, dust one is 12 feet 1 inches. Dust two is 11 feet and 6.5 inches that we write in the program source code. And then dust three is 23 feet and 7.25 inches. Now initializing a constant data member. Now we have seen what is a constant object, what is a constant member function, how a constant object is called, is, is passed as an argument to a function, and now initializing a constant data member. The constant data member uh, means that the private data member of the class that are constant that start with the keyword constant. So constant data member must be initialized using a member initializer list provided by the constructor, right? So they must be initialized there, otherwise they won't be able to, or we won't be able to initialize constant variable further in the program, or constants further in the program. So let's assume an example, we have a private data member count, and count, and then increment count, that is also a constant. Now constant data member must be initialized as soon as the object is created. So just the object ban gaya, now you, you have to initialize the constant data member because it's the same case when the object is constant and whenever you are going to create the constant object you have to initialize with, with some value then afterward in the program these values won't be won't able to change. So when there is a constant as a, as a private data member of the class then when, whenever the object is created, it must be initialized with some value. And then after initializing, it, it is not possible to change the value of the constant. 
let's see the example program so this is an example program in which we have two private data member count and increment so this increment is a constant and count as a simple int type so increment constructor this is a constructor add increment this is a function to add the increment so increment is why increment we make the increment constant because increment is something that that is um, uh, that is a uh, we can say the step how much step it should perform after each increment right so in add this increment we increment the count value by increment and then in print now here the print is also the constant function you can see count c out equals to count now this is also the constant function because it won't be able or we won't want to allow that function to change the private data member of the class Let's go to the program and see its execution. Now here you can see that first we are going to create a very value object whose value is whose value is ten and increment is of five right so before incrementing we, we print that value like value dot print so it is printed on the screen because in the print function it this is the output uh, statement then in for loop for i int j is equal to zero j less than three j plus plus we, we try to increment the value and then after increment we print the value and then value dot print that is printing that value so let's let's compile this is a compilation so first stage may we have the count 15 then we can have the count 5 20 then we have the count 25 but for all, all the increment value it is 6 6 6 6 it is 5 5 and 5 sorry so you can see here that whenever we 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 call the function add increment it increments the value of the count but let's say if I write over here increment that is let's say 34 let's see what happened so increment is a constant in a class definition so it shouldn't be allowed to change that right so assignment of read only data member increment right so this is a read only data member that is you just can read that value of this variable so it is not possible to change the value right also we can we cannot change the value of even count in the print class because this function is a constant function so we cannot do like this now let's see the common errors while using const constant object constant member function uh, constant uh, private data member and a constant while constant object passing to a function argument so following are the compilation error defining a const defining as const a member function that modifies the data member of an object is a compilation error defining a const a member function that called a non const member function of the class on the same instance of the class and invoking a non const member function with the const object so with the const object you can only invoke the constant member function you cannot invoke the non constant member function because it will give you an error right for example in the previous example here the time uh, the increment example so let's see if we can the time example so let's see we can invoke set our function right and let's comment out here the hours so passing const time as this argument of void time so because set hour is a non-constant function 
right set hour is a non constant function in set hour it won't change the value of the private data member i just commented out right because set hour is a non constant function so that's why it is not possible to call that function using a constant object now let's see what is a friend function a friend function of a class is defined outside that outside the scope of the class you have to tell through some mechanism that the function is a friend of a class but the definition of that function is outside the class definition it has the right to access the non public and public member or the data member or the member function of the class prototype of friend function appears in the class definition but the friend functions are not the member function so here we have to use the keyword to 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 just to uh, make it different from the member function of the class uh, inside the class definition so hum friend keyword use karenge inside the class definition to make it different from the member function of that class right so they are just they are called just like the normal function Uh, because for the member function we have to have an object of that class then we can call a member function but for the ordinary function there is no need for the object you just need to know the mechanism the number of parameters the type of the parameter of that function and the return value to call that function so uh, the friend function is called like a normal function friend function can be de can be declared or can be placed anywhere in the class definition right so place uh, all friendship fun declaration first inside the class definitions body so usually the uh, these friend functions are written at the beginning of the class definition to increase the readability of the class definition example is the count class so friend function ek aisa function hai let me explain it so friend function is ek aisa function hai jo ke क्लास के पब्लिक और प्राइवेट डेटा मेंबर को एक्सेस कर सकता है बट इट इज एक्चुअली नॉट द मेंबर फंक्शन ऑफ द क्लास यू हैव टू टेल द प्रोटोटाइप ऑफ दैट फंक्शन इनसाइड द क्लास डेफिनेशन एंड देन यू 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 कैन you can you, you can write the definition of that function outside the class definition and you can call that function from any other function and uh, the calling sequence is same as calling the ordinary functions in the count example this is the count example now here we can see that we have a set x object set x sorry set x function and that is the friend function of uh, count class and then we have a some public function that is a constructor default constructor and then we have the print a function that prints the value of the x and we have a private data member that is x and outside the definition of the class in the set x function the first parameter is the reference and the second parameter is the integer value so what we did is we just assign that value in the private data member of c object right so here you can see we can call we can we will see how we can call this function without uh, set x function without the object name let's go to the class to the program on this program we use a friend keyword to make set x function as a friend of count class right then we have a public main function and private func and and a print function that is the, these both are a public function and private data member is just the of uh, a variable x here we provide the definition of set x function the first parameter to the function is the uh referenced object of count class and then second value is the int value that is a, a integer value now it allow it is allowed because the set x is a friend function of count if we just remove this statement then this won't be allowed right so it's it's it depends upon the user of the oop uh, okay then in the main function we have a variable counter then count dot x after instantiation we return the value of counter by printing it on the screen and then set x function set x function ko we are passing counter that is an object of uh, count and the value 8 
Now this is a dereference object means that it creates a name C for the memory location that is allocated for the counter object in main right so here set x be used as a friend function so it can modify or change the value of counter so here you can see the message display and we're going to print the value of computer the values are changed let's compile and execute this program so counter x after initiation 0 counter x x after call to the syntax friend function is 8 and press any key to continue using this pointer the so objects member function can be manipulated can manipulate the objects data that is what we already know how do member function know which objects data to manipulate so member function you call the member function using some object now you are not passing any information of object one to that function right so how or what is the mechanism to get access to the private data member of the class and that is possible so how much how do the member function know which objects data member to manipulate and that is possible using this pointer so whenever you call the member function of an object and uh, it implicitly it means the C compiler C++ compiler implicitly pass this pointer that is the pointer to that object to that function so whenever you write let's say inches or feet and I, I told you about that yeah, within the add test function we have the inches and feet that is without the object name uh, now these inches and feet of the object with that call the add test function right so there's no need to write uh, the name of the object so this is internally actually it access that inches and feet using this pointer so we have we have seen the use of this pointer uh, implicit use of the c po uh, uh, this pointer now we can see we'll see the explicit use of the this pointer so every object has access to its own address through the pointer called this so every object you create there is a this pointer for that object and this pointer points to the memory location where that object is allocated if you create object c1 c2 c3 and if you call the function add uh, um, let's say get increment get count you can write c1 dot get count then this pointer of the object c1 is passed to the function implicitly automatically or uh, we can say it is passed by the compiler so when you return the hours it it actually uh, in the get uh, get uh, get count function when you return the count it actually return the count or access the count using this pointer internally right so this pointer is passed by the compiler as an implicit argument to each of the objects non static member function now we'll see what is a static member function uh, in the next topic so this pointer is passed by the compiler C++ compiler as an implicit argument that means it automatically pass this pointer to the Called called function, right? And that this pointer points to the object that actually called that function, right? The object that is on the left side of the dot operator. So an object's this pointer is not the part of the object itself, right? So this pointer is 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 actually not the part of the object, but it points to that object. You you have a pointer that points to that object. So the size of the memory occupied by the by the, this pointer is not reflected in the result of the size of the operation of the object. We will see what is the size of the function. Size of the function is a function. We have seen this function in the uh, in the previous course introduction to computer and pro programming. So size of function is a function that actually returns you the number of bytes occupied by that object or by that type or by that variable or by that string or by that structure right so size of function then you pass something to the size of function and it calculate the size of that thing that argument and calculating the size of that argument means it will tell that how many memory will be occupied by that argument
parameter right I will show you this size of function when we open the dev C editor so objects use this pointer implicitly or explicitly so we have seen use its usage of implicit that means that if we have a function like uh, get hours and it return hours now that hour is the private data member of the object that called get hour function now how that function access hours of that object or how it knows that this hours is the private data member of that object who called the function it knows it because the compiler provide this pointer to the get our function when that object called that function and this pointer is the pointer to the object that called that function right so object uses this pointer implicitly or explicitly to reference their data members and member functions no no what is the type of the this pointer the type of the this pointer depends upon the type of the object so non constant member function of the class employee the this pointer has type employee static const so if the function is a non constant member function of the employee class the type of the this pointer will be employee static const now here the pointer is constant but not the object right and constant member function of the class so the constant member function uh, are called by the constant object and constant object cannot call the non constant member function right so this is what we have seen so constant member function of a class employee the type of this pointer has the data type const employee static const now here the first const in this case so in this case this const keyword represent that this pointer is a constant you cannot change the value of this pointer right any case in any case now this is the same in the second case that the po that the, this pointer is a constant but this const keyword here that const keyword represents that the object is constant object because constant member function are called by the constant object and constant object will not call cannot call the non constant member functions right so this means that the pointer when uh, so the constant object call the constant member function the type of this pointer will be const employ const static const right i hope that is clear to you that this the second const here represents that that the pointer is constant that is in the both case in con non constant member function or the constant member function that you cannot change the value of that pointer the pointer is the constant right now in case of the non constant member function the object is not constant in case of constant member function the object is constant right in case you are calling a constant member function the object should be constant and in case of calling non constant member function the object is non constant right so in case you call non constant member function the type of this pointer is employee static const and in case of calling a constant member function the type of this pointer is const employee static const i hope that will be clear now implicit and explicit use of this pointer so in this example this is our test class right okay uh, just ignore this thing because uh, i have taken this definition uh, that is written outside the definition of the class so we have a, uh, we have a constructor right that initializes the value with zero and uh, if the value is provided it initializes the value of the x with this value right so x is a private data member now in the print function just ignore this thing as well now in the print function you will see that we are going to display the value of x over here so that is the implicit use of this pointer to access the member x implicit mean the compiler will use here this pointer to x to access the value of the private data member but here in this case 
in the second C out statement we, we can use like this and this arrow operator X so when we write this we get the address of the object and then we can use the arrow operator to access the value this is this is same concept if we have a structure to a pointer a structure uh, if we have a pointer to a structure right so if we have a structure and then we have a pointer that points to that structure now how we can access the access the uh, uh, member of that structure we can access using the arrow operator right so this is the explicit use of the this pointer explicit means that you you can you have used it actually now the C will not C C++ compiler will not use it right but in the previous case here if we just write X then uh, implicitly the C++ compiler will use this pointer right so this is the dereferencing at the pointer and then when you dereference the pointer you can use a dot operator to access that uh, value of the X right let's let's go to the example so let's remove this thing Now here we create a test object, assign it value 12, and then we print the value of that object. That's it. So when we call the print function, it will it will call it will execute these three statements, right? right so that is the output so this is this this call is the implicit call of this pointer implicit use of this pointer and this is the explicit use you have used it and this is the dereferencing the this pointer right so dereferencing means that uh, uh, you, you can read static as value at address this so you reach the uh, reach at the memory location where the object is located and then from that memory location you are accessing x you can use dot and the name of the uh, variable x y z so here we just have x so we can just have x over here right if if if, if we have y over here int y we can access either y or x from here right let's say initialize y by 5 so if I write here dot y, so it will print y. It will print. It should print five. I should write y over here as well. Now it should print five, right? So, so you should know at this stage the difference between uh, using this pointer with arrow and dereferencing this pointer with dot. So if we have a pointer, now we say we have a pointer and with this pointer go to this pointer address by using the arrow operator and access this value. So this is same as we have a pointer to a structure, right? So whenever we have a pointer to a structure, we use arrow operator to access the member of that structure. Okay. Uh, to 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 uh, to understand this concept in more detail i will show you the example in the next lecture uh, that we create a structure in the next lecture we create a structure definition then we have a we create a pointer to that structure and then we will see that uh, using that pointer to a structure we can access the member of that structure using arrow operator and then we can dereferencing dereference that pointer and using dot operator we can access the member of that structure right so that is for the today's lecture i hope you understand uh, the const concept and the friend function concept and then the this pointer concept that is very important in the next class we will see the static data member of the class static object and the friend class Thank you very much.